What's going on guys? Welcome back to Your Lake Fort Guide and today we have got some of the best informative content that we've ever brought to you on this channel. We're going to dig into map study. We're going to talk about how to find transition points in the summer to fall transition. That's one of the questions I get asked the most is what do you mean by transition points? Not only am I going to explain that to you today, I'm also going to show you how I go about locating them on map when I'm getting ready to go on to a new body of water. So hopefully this will be able to help some of y'all. So stay tuned to today's episode of the Guides Network right here on your Lake Fort Guide. So before we dig into the map, let's talk for a little bit about summer to fall transition and what are transition points. So summer to fall transition, when that water starts to trim back cool, you reach your peak temperature of the summer around here, July, August sometimes, uh, and then eventually that water is going to start to trim back cooler. We've already started that process this year. Um, it doesn't happen just right away, but when you get a significant cooling trend, some of those first fish to go ahead and pull off that main lake and pull into some shallow water are going to go ahead and start moving. Uh, it's a really weird deal. It's a very unique deal this time of year. Um, the turnover is going to happen. It's kind of starting to want to happen. You see a little bit of bubbles here and there. Not much yet. But with what we got going on this week with the hurricane and the cooler temperatures and the cloud cover and potentially a bunch of cooler water being dumped into the lakes, uh, it could kick off a turnover as early as this week, which is not normal. Usually, the turnover is going to happen sometime in September, maybe even as late as October. I've seen it before. But this year, everything is a little bit cooler. The tips never reach as high temperature as they normally do. So right now, we're dealing with 84, 85, 86 degree water right here at the end of August, which is a little different than normal. But what we've got going on, basically, is I think there's already some of those fish that are kind of wanting to push a little bit, wanting to move off of that really far out in the middle of the main lake structure that they make their summer homes on. So when that starts to happen, either you've got fish spread out because of some middle of the road water temperatures like we kind of have going on now, or you've got fish actually transitioning and moving around. One of the best things you can do during kind of a challenging time, really it's one of the more challenging times of the year when these fish start moving around, uh, one of the best things you can do to put the odds in your favor is find what we call transition points or stop signs. You'll hear me refer to them as stop signs from time to time. And all that is, is a place for a fish to make a temporary home along their migration. So what I'm looking for is fish come off the main lake and start to move in the creeks. Now, we're talking about the big, big main lake. And we're going to show you all this on the map. As they move into these big creek arms, man, that's on these big lakes, that's as big as our smaller lake. Some of these creek arms are, a lot of these creek arms are. So even though they're moving in the creek arms, they're not necessarily going to be shallow. It's going to be a lot of mid-depth range stuff. A lot of, on the shallow side, 7, 8, 10 foot of water, down to like 15, 16 foot of water. A lot of what I call mid-depth range is where a lot of your best transition points or stop signs are going to be. And as these fish spread out and move around, you're just looking for something as they move in and out of the mouths of these creeks, in and out of the, in and out of the inside of these creeks. You're looking for something to create a temporary home that will gather some of them. You're not looking for big giant schools of fish. You got fish spread out. You got fish moving around. You're not going to find the big huge schools of fish during this time of year when this is going on. So what you've got to find is something that a few fish, a handful of fish, can make a temporary home and give them a good uh, area to ambush, prey, and feed at. So one of the things that I really like to look for, and you're going to see me talk about that a lot today, is going to be secondary points. And really what I'm looking for is secondary points with creek channels really close by if not right up against them because those creek channels a lot of times are going to serve as the highways for those fish and there's another thing we'll talk about here a little bit later when we're looking at the map but a lot of times the creek channel will be the highway for that fish and if it brings it up to that point well as that fish travels that highway now he's got a temporary home and maybe he stops on it then another one stops on it and before you know it you got three four five fish sitting on a point maybe you can pick off a few of them that is a really good example of what we're talking about when we say something we're traveling fish spread out fish just gather a few of them make a little temporary home for them 
If this was still hot summertime, we'd be looking for offshore big houses, humps, pond nabs, road beds that can gather big numbers of fish. These can be very subtle, very small pieces of structure because we don't have to hold a bunch of fish. You're not going to have big schools of fish when this is going on. So this discussion today is designed to really help you find some stuff that can really help you be consistent in the challenging time of year. Uh, like we're going through a little bit now, starting to go through, and we're about to really go through as the turnover happens and we transition from summer to fall. It can be one of the tougher times of year to stay consistent day to day. Another one of my favorite things to look for is docks. Docks at the mouth of coves and creeks, docks inside the mouths of coves and creeks that have some deeper water on them. Again, just like the point, if a dock has a creek channel swinging up to it or really close to it, man, that's really good. So those are kind of some of the stuff I'm looking for when I'm talking about transition points or stop signs. Now let's get over here on Navionics. Let's go to a lake I've never been to and see if I can find some good transition points that if I was going to this lake tomorrow, these would be where I would want to go check out where I'd want to fish, where I'd want to look to see if I can find me some transitioning fish. All right, guys, so for today, we're going to focus on Lake Bob Sandlin. It's very ironic because if you look right there, that's Lake Monticello where I've been a million times. But this, there's the dam from Monticello to Sandlin. Lake Bob Sandlin is all this right here. Never once been on that body of water in my life. Don't really know anything about it. Um, and that's the reason I'm choosing it. I wanted to go to something I was totally unfamiliar with. It'd be super easy for me to go to a lake I know really well, like Lake Fork, and just pull up some transition points that I've fished over the years and show you what they look like. But I really wanted to walk through the process of finding them, uh, just like you guys will have to do if you're going to a new body of water. So here we go. I'm going to use Navionics web app. I'm also going to use Google Earth, which normally I would use primarily to find vegetation, shoreline grass, cover, stuff like that. But in this case, we're not going to really, I don't think Sandlin has a lot of grass from the little bit of knowledge I've heard about it. But one thing that is interesting, even on Google Earth, if you look right here, that's going to be a hump, guys. Here's going to be another little hump. These are going to be some shallow areas that you can see kind of sticking out like a sore thumb by using Google Earth. And I bet if we go over here to Navionics and zoom in right there, it's going to uh, show us or confirm what we're seeing there. Yeah, right there. You can see it's a shallow area right there, plain as day. And here's that other little hump. And here's those little flat areas over here close to the dam. So all that is confirming what we're seeing. Now, one thing that sticks out like a sore thumb, I said we're looking for transition areas. So if I zoom back out, we're going to look at the main lake here. This is the big part of the main lake right here on Bob Sandlin. Um, as these fish move in off of the main lake and start to move into a creek arm, one of the first things I see is this little point right here. This point right here, now you look at the depth on that, that's perfect. You got 11 foot on top, 10 foot, it's summertime, maybe 9 or 8 foot. Either way, it's in that good transition depth zone that we talked about. Anywhere from 7 foot down to 16 foot, something like that. Now, there's a creek channel over here. It doesn't swing in real close. It kind of stays closer over to the other side. I really wish that creek channel would swing in off the end of this. That would make this like an unbelievably on paper an unbelievably good transition point but as it stands this point is so obvious and so dynamic and such a dynamic piece of structure that I'm definitely gonna put this one on my uh, to-do list so to speak I'm definitely gonna be fishing this spot right here at some point in my day on Bob Sandlin if I'm going there tomorrow perfect location mouth of a major creek arm right next to the main lake great dynamic point sticking out like a sore thumb that is a really obvious good secondary point transition point stop sign everything we're talking about you know this hump here is almost too shallow to fish this time of year right on top i would maybe look at this other times of the year but like springtime fish moving in pre-spawn that would probably be one that i'd want to hit but right now it's not really something i'd consider now one thing i will say is there's a little point that runs out off the side of this hump that goes out to 20 foot of water and there's a creek channel bend really close to it with a big submerged culvert down here it looks in about 30 foot of water sometimes these uh navionics depth lines aren't exactly accurate so i'd want to Having a submerged culvert there is such a big deal that I'd want to verify that that is in 30 foot of water. If it is, then I'm not going to fish it. But if it's in like 20, you mean that's something you can really use your electronics on. It might be worth giving it just a little once over on your graph. One thing about when you go to a new lake, when you're doing map study, you want to find a bunch of stuff for you to go hit and go look at. It, it, you may not even make a cast on some of it, but you want to look at it. You want to make sure when you're going to a new body of water, you try to keep your mind open, get a whole bunch of areas to fish, planned out, 
and run through as many of them as you can as quickly as possible and eliminate water. Eliminating water is as much of the battle as anything, that's for sure. You talk to any touring pro, they'll tell you that 90% of the stuff they fish in practice, they'll never go back to again. Uh, that's a big, big part of this game. But this this point's a little interesting with this creek channel swinging right here off the end of it and this point sticking out off this hump. So maybe I wouldn't look at this up here, but I would certainly come out here and graph around in this area right in here. And one thing I saw in here that would be interesting to take a look at a little later in the year, if you look right here, you've got a point with a dock and a creek channel that splits out in front of it. So this point's actually probably going to run a little further out this way like this than this map is showing. But this looks very interesting to me because this is in the back of this creek. Now, this may not be so good right now. Maybe it is. I, I would still want to, you know, wouldn't be first on my priority list to check, but I'd still want to check this right now. But certainly as we get into the turnover time of year and even right after it, this is going to be a point that's going to be really interesting to me in the back of this creek down here by the dam. And here's one more little subtle kind of smaller point that you can look at that's kind of interesting. So you got this point over here. That was the first one we talked about. If you look right across, there's a really subtle little point running out right here. It's got an old pond next to it. So there's going to be a pond dam in here somewhere, probably right there it looks like. But this point right here is very interesting as well. It's one of those smaller, more subtle type of pieces of structure that maybe is not going to gather a huge group. But remember, this time of year, the fish are getting spread out. They're moving around. So you're just looking for something to gather a handful of fish. And that could certainly be something that might do that. Looks like we got a boat lane right here. So you're going to get to irritate people by fishing in the boat lane. That's always a bonus. Just kidding, of course. Be careful when you're fishing in a boat lane. Um, Creek is kind of rel the main creek channel is relatively close to the end of that point, so that would be one I would definitely have to check out. I'd probably start right here and then run right over here and then check this out. Uh, that'd be three good spots right in a row. Also, one thing I really like about this right here, it's a natural funnel point of a little bit. If you look, is you got the big body of water out here, and then the creek kind of broadens out back here, but right in here is a, is a natural choke point. All the fish that are going to funnel into this creek are going to get condensed in this area right here by this point and this point. Uh, and there's, the, there's that other point right there that we were just looking at. So you got a couple of good fishing spots, good pieces of structure in a natural funnel point. I really, I don't know, you guys that are from Sandland that fish it, let me know. Is this like a hot spot area? Is this a good area? This looks like this would be something that would be a really, really good area to fish when fish are transitioning and moving around. All right, so this is going to be the creek right across from it down here on the lower end of the lake. One thing I noticed about this creek is it really holds its depth way far back into the creek. If you look, this is a deep creek. It's 40, 30 feet out here, 40 feet. That's crazy deep. And even back in here, uh, it gets down to where it pretty narrow creek, but it's still 25, 27. It's a deep creek. Now, there's a marina right here. Man, that's interesting. So... This creek is probably going to take a little bit longer for these changes to take effect because it has so much more water volume in it. But this marina being back here and having a point at the mouth of it and then having a bridge that serves as a, a natural funnel point again, this is another interesting area right here. This would definitely be a marina. I don't know what it looks like. I have no idea. Like I said, I know nothing about Bob Sandlin, but I grew up fishing Lake Conroe. And we used to fish marina slips quite a bit whenever this time of year comes around and even in the summertime we fished them a lot having these marina docks right here with a point at the mouth with a funnel point that's looking like a good little area to maybe have a few fish stop when they're moving around create that temporary home plus that being a marina there's more than likely going to be some residential fish that are going to be there already waiting on you then as i scroll a little further back in the creek i find something that's interesting to me back here See how this creek channel swings right up against this point? There's going to be a little little ridge that sticks out here that's going to run the edge of this creek channel with that little bend in it and then a split right here. That is going to be another area that as these fish transition further back. Again, this one may take a little longer to develop, but that's going to be an area that is going to be a great stop sign when fish really start making their fall migration, when they start moving off the main lake and getting back into creeks. This is going to be a spot I would definitely... This is something very subtle. It doesn't stick out on the map. It doesn't look like much of anything on the map right here if you look at it, but, man, that is a high percentage. Could be a really good, subtle, out-of-the-way area Uh for you to really kind of get right in a hurry and find you a good limit of fish or something sitting right there at the right time of year. 
And here's something else. This isn't anything other than just a general map study tip. This is off topic. So pause what we've been talking about. Here's something new. Because this doesn't have a point on it. It's not anything special. This is just something I know from studying maps over the years. See how straight this blue line is? No creek flows that straight. Very, very seldom will a creek flow that straight. But if you look at these contour lines where they kick in right here, boys, that's a creek swing. Anytime you see some odd contour lines, you got contour lines flowing with the blue line, flowing with the blue What is this? When you see an odd contour line sticking out off the side of one of these blue creek channel markers, the creek actually swings over here and makes a big sharp turn. Like in the wintertime, pre-spawn, that's probably going to be a great creek swing in the pre-spawn right there. All right, so here we are, one more creek up. And essentially what I'm doing now is I'm going from creek to creek up the lake, and I'm looking for the most dynamic pieces of structure and the most the best pieces of structure that I find to be transition stop signs uh, in the mouth of every cove, every creek. That's what I'm looking for. So this is the next cove up that same bank from that last one. We've got a really shallow hump, six foot on top, five foot on top, something like that. Somebody's caught some fish here because they put a uh, fish icon on here. These are public. General public can add these spots on here. Uh, but a really nice hump, great hump out in front of a point, a secondary point inside of a creek uh, with a roadbed running right off the edge of it. So, hey, you know what I'm saying? We got an old submerged culvert right here. I'm going to graph all this. I'm probably just going to straight pull up and fish the top of this hump and drag down the sides of it a little bit, especially if there's any wind blowing on it. Pick up my old shaky head. Man, this is good. This looks really good for a stop sign at the mouth of a cove or a creek. That's a pretty big cove right there, split creek, whatever you want to call it. That looks really good. That would be on my top echelon of I've got to hit that as a stop sign and transition right there. Now, I know Bob Sandlin does have a few docks on here, and the map shows some of the docks on it. But, uh, you know, a lot of times when you go to dock fishing, you go to a lake that's just slap full of docks, it can be overwhelming. Which docks do you fish? So I'm about to show you guys a good example of a stretch of docks that I would fish during this transition time. Uh, this is the main lake right out here. And if we scroll down into this cove, you'll see this creek channel kind of swings in here and favors this side of the creek a little bit, especially in front of these two docks right here. I don't know these two docks. I've never seen these two docks, but they look like they've got decent depth on them. I would fish this stretch. See how this whole cove is isolated? You just got four docks. Very isolated docks, creek channel swinging in close by them. These would be docks that I would pick out on a map out of a lake full of docks and go, hmm, these are a little more isolated. These have got a creek channel in front of them. They've got good depth. This looks like some docks that I want to hit right here. And I'll zoom out so you guys can see where that is. So. Hopefully y'all can kind of tell. Blue Tower Cove, it says. I'll tell you what I'm really, really, really starting to like Bob Sandlin a lot looking at it on the map. As I look here, these docks are going to be a little bit shallower, it looks like. But one thing I like about these docks, if you look, there's a roadbed running right down this side. This is a roadbed running down this side of this creek right here. All the way from the main lake, comes right in off the edge of that point. Love it. And then the road bed turns across, and we've got a submerged culvert out here in, let's see, looks like 15, 16 foot of water. So this submerged culvert, this road bed, that's obviously going to be a great stop sign in the middle of this creek. And these docks over here with the road bed running beside it, I don't know, they may be too shallow, but this one right here looks like it sticks out far enough. This one on the point has got a little bit of depth on it, so road bed runs right under that dock, like on a point. Mouth of a cove, roadbed running under it, a little bit of depth on it. Like these two docks right here are awesome. And then this submerged culvert looks awesome. I really like Bob Sandlin because it seems like every little creek arm, every little you know good-sized pocket that I look at on the map has something that sticks out to me is a very good feature to fish. We've only covered, I don't know, let's zoom out and see. I mean, as we look at Bob Sandlin, here's the north end of Bob Sandlin or the west end, here's the east end. So we've only covered to like right here on this side and up here. We haven't covered any of this. We haven't covered all of this. And we've already found all these spots to fish. And that's, I'm going to try and run all these. I'm going to map out this whole lake, find everything in every mouth of every cove. It looks like a good transition point. And if that's what I think I'm running, I'm going to run every one of those tomorrow if I'm going out there. Okay, so let's talk about docks. We're in the next creek up, Cherokee Cove. And if you look, there's a ton of docks in this cove, obviously, right? 
And as I look at all these docks and I look at this creek and I look at this cove, a couple spots stand out. Right here, these contour lines get real, real tight, which tells me that creek may swing a little closer. Either way, this dock, these little docks right here, out of all these docks, this little small pair of docks right here, that's the one that piques my interest the most because that creek channel is the closest to those docks. The contour lines are tight. They're going to have good depth on them. So out of all these docks, this is the dock, so I'm going to pick out the fish. Maybe this one, too, because the contour lines are tight. tells me maybe the creek channel swings out a little bit outside of this blue line. But for sure, these right here. And then as I go back up here, this creek channel kind of runs down this side. But if you look right here, the contour lines get tight. Again, like I told you earlier, that tells me that creek probably does more of this than what the map is showing right now. So I'm going to at least side scan this, follow the creek channel with my side scan, find out how close that creek channel gets to these docks, and I'm going to check some of these docks right in here as well. All right, guys, right here, a couple more creeks up, and I saw a couple other, you know, stretches of docks, but they were basically the exact same thing I just showed you, so I didn't want to just be repetitive in this video. But here's, here's another interesting point right here that we're going to look at that looks like a really good stop sign. As we get into the mouth, main, oops, main lake out here, mouth of this creek right here, uh, there's a little creek flowing out of here. See that? That is a feeder creek, a secondary creek coming into this creek, blending with the back. So you got a creek junction right in here somewhere. This runs right by this little bitty point. See this point right here? This little secondary point. I love this little secondary point. It sticks out there, 10 foot of water. I got a dock on the side of it. I got a point. I got a creek channel. That's like three points of excellence. This is going to be a very, very high percentage transition area right here has everything you could want. Mouth of a cove, close to the main lake, got a point sticking out with some good structure, got a dock, got a creek junction close by with the main channel flowing right off the end of the point. It doesn't get much better than that for stop signs, transition point type of areas. That is a great looking spot. Somebody from Sandlin that fishes it, if y'all have fished this point, let me know. Is that spot legit in transition times of year? Okay, guys, we're getting to the point of the lake where it starts to narrow down. As you can see, we're up here on the far west corner right here. What I like about this is if you look, you got the big main lake out here, and this basically forms into a major giant creek arm right here. And then if we zoom in on it, there's a natural funnel point right here. Okay, then we've got a point with a dock, and we've got a submerged bridge from the main channel. The main channel comes in right off this point. Very similar, right? Main channel swinging right off the edge of this point, submerged bridge, roadbed running off it, dock on the tip of the point. Man, I'm liking all this. I would even probably come over here and fish this boat ramp right here. I don't know what boat ramp that is, but I'd probably fish that too. But that is a really another good transition point. Well, all right, guys, I could keep going on that map and probably keep finding some more spots. I mean, that was a pretty uh, in-depth map study of finding transition points. We covered a lot of the lake. We didn't cover it all. But it started to get a little bit repetitive. We're finding a lot of the same stuff. But you can hopefully take those lessons. And now maybe some of you that have always asked me, what are transition points, what are stop signs? Maybe now you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. Uh, those spots are very effective. They're very good. A little bit smaller pieces of structure, a little bit more out of the way, a little bit less obvious. But they help you stay consistent in the tougher times. Anytime it starts getting tough, fish start spreading out, moving around, these are the type of points that I depend on to really help me keep putting fish in the boat day in, day out consistently. So like I said, hopefully that'll help some of you guys, man. We're going to wrap up the map study on summer to fall transition spots, and uh, y'all use those tools and go check them out. Now, I will tell you, if you want to find some of these spots on Lake Fork, the easiest way to do it is to subscribe to the Fish Life app Lake Fork Premium Package. And if you go on there and do that, over the next month or two, you'll definitely see a lot of transition points as these fish start to move around. We'll be doing fresh updates uh, this coming week on Lake Fork as well as all of our other premium packages as well. Unfortunately, Bob Sandlin is not available on the Lake Fork Fish Life app, but many of our lakes around here are Lake Fork. We even have Sam Rayburn, Salida Bend, Ray Roberts, Texoma, Louisville, Grapevine, Hubbard, Levon, uh, just tons and tons of lakes available on there. And, and as these fish start to transition and fall, you can bet those waypoints will be kept up to date with those fish movements. Skeeter, you're very distracting, you know that? Hollywood Skeeter. Skeeter Hollywood. That's what we're going to start calling you, puppy dog. Hey, thank you guys for watching today. We want to thank our sponsors over at Six Sense Fishing. You want awesome hats like this? You want some of the best fishing gear in the game? Go to SixSenseFishing.com. Order it up. When you do, punch in that code, your Lake Fork Guide, get a 10% discount on all orders. Hey, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you guys so much. Be sure to check out that Fish Life app. It's linked in the description. Six Sense Fishing, linked in the description. Go check those out. 
We appreciate all the support you guys continue to give us and always have. And we'll see y'all next time right here. Where are we going to see them, Skeeter? On your Lake Fort Guide.